All right. Uh, we have the honor of having our new director, who last time was with the governor, so we couldn't enjoy his company, give his first director's report. Thank you, sir. Uh, I think I'm, I'm going to go down there and do my presentation into the well. Um, Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, as Commissioner White said, sorry I couldn't be here at that last meeting. Uh, there's something about it that got away. I spent the time with you guys. As a matter of fact, I was supposed to be testifying today, but I just could not go to our flight tomorrow. So Tony's testifying for me. Glad to be here with you all today. Um, as I mentioned, Last time I, I couldn't be here, I haven't had a chance to really uh, share my vision of uh, uh, where I see the department going with you. Uh, so I hope everybody has a copy of my presentation. I'm going to kind of walk through it. Uh, so first I'm going to talk a little bit about my vision for, for, the, uh, for the department. Uh, then I talk a little bit about the governor's uh, road to opportunity, uh, uh, the, the budget, where we are, uh, and then uh, call to action, and then uh, fixing Michigan roads. So these are some of the things I've already shared with, with our employees. My vision is a uh, uh, four-point four vision. The first one is uh, innovation. The second one is transparency, uh, efficiency, and also uh, strengthening our partnership with, with uh, a lot of our stakeholders out there. Uh, let me start with innovation. Uh, the department has always been known as a very innovative organization already anyway. However, I, I feel that moving forward with us asking the, 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 the public to trust us with uh, this large sum of money, we're going to have to continue to find ways to be more innovative. Uh, some of the examples you see out there is uh, the I-75 uh, modernization project going on in Oakland, Oakland right now. That that's a innovative financing uh, mechanism that we're using on that project. That project, if we had not used the the, the financing method we're using now, would have taken us about 20 years. And the way things are now, it looks like we'll be able to get it done in about eight years. And that's uh, really uh, saving us a lot of money. Uh, fixing the road, giving it back to the public, and I think uh, I, I give all the credit to to Tony and and the Metro staff for coming up with that with that idea. US 131. Uh, last year we did a major project in Grand Rapids. Uh, we used a, a movable wall. Movable wall is really not something new in in MDOT uh, uh, toolbox. However, I was really impressed with the way Grand Region. I uh, was able to use that to maintain traffic. Um, for, for some of you guys who've never seen this done before, you, you kind of move that wall based on the flow of traffic. In the morning, if, if the rush hour is heading into Grand Rapids, you move the wall to be able to create two lanes. Uh, and then in the evening, when people are coming out, you, you kind of move it again to uh, get people uh, to, to get out of town. So it. it you, you, you change it based on the flow of traffic, and it, it worked extremely well. And I, I thought this is something that I would like to highlight as uh, a, an innovative way to, for us to at least keep the public uh, engaged in the fact that we are really trying to look for ways to do things better and accommodate them any way we can. Uh, the, the third one I'm highlighting here is uh, uh, US 23 flex route. This is a project that's really near and dear to my heart because of uh, all the creative and innovative things that we did on that project. This was a, a project that could have cost easily $400 million uh, if we were to widen the freeway the way uh, you know some were proposing. We were able to do this for about uh, $120, $130 million. And uh, to me, that's right-sizing a project. You, you're fixing a six-hour problem, not create 
uh, you know, putting a 24-hour solution out there for a six-hour problem. So this is this is really a, a very innovative uh, idea that I see us uh, doing more and more of in the future. Transparency, this is one thing, as you all know, the governor's really uh, pushing that, that we become a, a more transparent uh, state, uh, state organization, not just MDOT, all, all the state um, organizations. And the, the example you have on your screen here is a project that uh, is going on I-94 in Jackson. This is an interactive uh, website that we created where uh, anybody and in the, in the public can just go and click on this uh, project website and you can see right on the bottom right, you'll see uh, it will show you exactly where the project is and, and what stage they are, how much they've spent up to date, and moving forward. Quite frankly, you, 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 the, those pictures you see on your left there, you can click on it, you'll see walkers out there walking. So it, th these are the kind of tools that I think uh, for us as an organization we'll probably have to invest a little more on to educate the public and quite frankly get them engaged in some of the things we're doing out there. So it answers a lot of questions before they, they uh, uh, call us to ask questions. They can easily go in there and, and, and be part of that project. You can track the project on a daily basis and I think it's a really good tool. <clears throat> efficiency, I just kind of want to highlight a few of, of the efficiencies that I think uh, we, we've been able to accomplish through innovation. Uh, Pleasant uh, Valley Road, this is a, a bridge over I-96 in the Brighton area. If you go on I-96, this bridge that you see on your left hand side was hit uh, <coughs> last, um, I believe it was in the spring. And if you see that, that on the clearance, there's 14 foot 8 inches. This is the last bridge in that whole corridor with less on the clearance. And uh, the facial beam was hit. The, the idea was to rush back out there and put, replace that facial beam for $600,000. And we in the university region at that time said, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Perhaps this is an opportunity to improve this. Uh, on the clearance condition. What if we put that brain back and it gets hit again in another month or two? So we took a step back. We, we did a lot of uh, structural analysis and we found out that we could jack up that bridge for another uh, almost two feet and gain an under clearance for an extra $600,000. And that's what we did. The insurance paid 600000 to replace the beam, and we put another 600000 in there. So we were able to jack up that bridge, and now we have the whole corridor free of any bridges that doesn't have 16 foot on the clearance. So you drive out through there now, you, you, you see a brand new secondhand bridge. It's a uh, really very innovative way to to, to not only save money, but preserve the life of that bridge for a long time. We didn't have to scrap it all and, and, and start all over. So that was a good thing. Uh, the other two pictures, the one in the middle and the one on your right, uh, uh, divergent diamond interchange projects that we did on uh, University Drive in Urban Hills, and the other one in St. Cascade Road in uh, Grand Rapids. These are projects that if we hadn't used this method could have cost us a lot of money, especially the university drive one. I was in Metro when we, we were first talking about this. That, that was the very first one that was done in the state. It was going to cost us a lot of money to buy right away to put in a, a full clover leaf interchange. But somebody came to us with this new uh, 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 diversion diamond interchange uh, approach, and we, we took a look at it. We studied it. It made sense. We were able to fit everything in the in the existing footprint without having to displace people and buy property and right away. So it, it saved us a lot of money. So that that project uh, the, on Urban Hills was uh, very innovative and I think an efficient way to to uh, really accomplish the same thing. So that would, would, with the success of that, then we also tried it on Cascade in uh, in uh, in Grand Rapids. 
Uh, strengthening our partnerships, this is something I, I, I believe in. I think our, our previous director did an outstanding job building a lot of partnerships uh, across the state, quite frankly, uh, across the nation. And I felt that for us to, to continue to be a, a, a viable uh, organization, we have to do that. We have a lot of uh, stakeholders out there that I, I, I felt, you know, continuing that, that strong partnership is the right way to go. I chose one of them, uh, obviously the legislature, because uh, uh, we really have to get along with them and be be pretty much available to 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 to, to help whenever it's it's needed. Lobbying firms, uh, contracting community suppliers, uh, consultants, SEC is uh, a good partner, and in, and then uh, the the general motor and public. So I'm going to get into some of the, uh, just a quick highlight of some of the projects uh, that we have going on this year. This, uh, the first one is I-75 in, in um, uh, Ohio State Line. This is a $116 million project. The project, I think, is getting ready to uh, get started. It's going to be a two-year job. It's about a five-mile stretch. Uh, if you've ever driven I-75 between 275 all the way into uh, Ohio. That that whole pavement that's about a 20 mile stretch is really, really in bad condition. Uh, to really do the whole thing at once would have cost us about over half a billion dollars. Since we don't have that, what we've been doing is just, we're kind of segmented out into five mile segments. And, you know, every other year we'll go out there and, and, and do some. We did the not, not in half about two years ago, so now we, going back to the, to the southern border and walk our way back north. So this is a project that uh, it's, it's been long overdue. The pavement out there is really, really in bad condition. Um, I-94 out here in, uh, in, in the city of Detroit, through, from uh, Connor all the way to I-96, it's, it's projected to be about a $2.2 .2 billion project. Uh, that's using the $2016, obviously. but. What we've been doing is slowly chipping away at it. We are fixing all the bridges along that corridor, widening them, lengthening them, making them uh, long enough where we can fit in the, the, the extra lane uh, on the freeway. So there, there's some bridges that are going to be done this year, and uh, hopefully once we get all the bridges in that corridor lengthened, then we'll start working on the, on the main line itself. Um, I-94 project in Jackson that I mentioned earlier, this is uh, 1.4 miles of freeway reconstruction. Uh, uh, Cooper Street, which is the main entrance into the uh, city of Jackson, is, as a matter, I believe it's been demoed now. The, the, the bridge is no longer there. That and the Grand River Bridge to the west of that is all being reconstructed. I think in the next five years, the whole corridor through Jackson is going to look totally different. We are investing a lot of money in that corridor because that freeway uh, was was built in the 50s and it's it's way over capacity. So uh, we're investing money in there and trying trying to uh, fix fix the problems out there. Um, <clears throat> this is I-96, I-196 in Grand Rapids. Uh, the whole interchange, I, I was in Grand Rapids on on Wednesday. There's a lot of work going on out there with this project. It's about a $40 million job. It's going to be, uh, uh, hopefully, by the end of this year, we'll be, we may have some punch list items to come back to do next year. But yeah, the idea is to try and get as much of this done as possible towards the end, by the end of the year. Uh, <clears throat> I-475 reconstruction in uh, Bay Region, Carpenter Road to Cleo. This is one of those 50-year uh, pavement project that uh, the legislators mandated us, us to do from uh, the 2015 uh, uh, funding package. It's a $43 million project. The, the project is scheduled to be completed uh, at the end of this year. It's about a 3.2-mile, six-lane uh, freeway project. So uh, we, we're hoping we will have a good uh, 30-year pavement and a 50-year pavement experimental project out there that we can, over the, over the years, uh, compare. Uh, I just want to talk a little bit about the governor's uh, road to opportunity uh, budget. 
<clears throat> the slide you see in front of you here is uh, just showing that uh, the governor's proposing a $60.2 billion uh, budget. But what I like is you focus on the general fund money. It's $10.7 billion. And if you take a look at the next slide, it was $10.7 billion in 2000, and it's still $10.7 billion today. Again, I think the governor's making the case that with the rate of inflation, we should, that should have increased to about $16 billion now. I mean, it's, that, that, that money is stagnant, and that's, that's really part of the difference you're seeing in a lot of the things we're doing out there. Uh, this next slide is just showing you uh, where all the crum uh, crumbling roads are in, in the state. So when you hear people from up north Michigan saying, well, we don't have that problem, uh, uh, this is a Southeast Michigan uh, problem. Don't, don't bother me with your 45 cents uh, proposal. That That's really not the case. It, the, as you can see in that slide, we, we have bad roads everywhere. Uh, so the the idea is to kind of highlight the fact that uh, it, it, we are one state. We all have this, this issue, and we all need to tackle it. This next slide, I just, I just use it to drive home the point of how we have uh, been uh, we've not invested enough money in our roadways in a long time. If you look at the, the comparison between Michigan and Florida, Florida has 122,659 uh, miles, uh, 659 lane miles, and uh, Michigan has 122,286 lane miles. Uh, look at the, the rate of our poor condition, 39%. Uh, Florida is 11%. Uh, look at the bridges. We have about 11,156. They have 12,313. But take a look at the condition. 11% of our bridges are in uh, deficient uh, condition, while Florida is 2.1%. And why you see that huge disparity is because Florida spends $6.1 billion a year on their roadways. So when people drive to Florida and come back and say, well, how come their roads are better? Yeah, that's why. Uh, I, I'm not using Ohio here, which I could use. Ohio spends about a billion dollars than we do, but I will hear people make the argument, but Ohio has more roads than you. Yeah, they should be spending more money. Okay, you got me there. But take a look at this. This is as, as close as I could find out there as far as comparison. Uh, quite frankly, my argument to people is that we should be spending more than Florida because, again, we have to buy salt, we have to plow snow, we have a whole lot of other things that we do. And the other not-so-fun facts about it is that Florida spends a billion dollars a year in their maintenance of their roadway every year, and we only spend $330 million dollars huge difference. I remember when I came in the department uh, 29 or so years ago. In the spring, we take out all the plows and we get out there, we do a lot of proactive maintenance. We, you know, clean out the ditches, the, the uh, catch basins and culverts so that we can get the water out of the pavement and do a lot of, you know, shoulder blading and new gravel, new, new uh, flex uh, post out there. I mean, a lot of the things we used to do proactively, we don't do anymore because, again, uh, the, the money is just not there. A lot of the, 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 the counties are complaining because come April or May, they're out of money. We put them on emergency because we're underfunding not just fixing the roads, also maintaining the roads. That's the, the cross of the problem. Here is a slide that shows... Uh, in 2015, the funding uh, package, the orange line you see there, that skid slope graph you see there is where our payment condition was headed uh, before the pa passage of that 2015 uh, uh, budget. Uh, the black line is what actually happened. So as you can see, it did not stop the, 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 the slide. All it did was slow it down. So the, the green line you see, that's what the governor's proposing that if, you pa if we pass this 45 cents gas tax, this is what it's gonna look like. You're gonna see it stop the, the, the slide and you're gonna see an upward trajectory uh, of, 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 of that 
line. And in, in her proposal, she's saying, if, if we do that, then money that's dedicated to transportation fund will be constitutionally dedicated to that. Money for general fund goes to general fund, and money to school aid goes to school aid. Because all we're doing right now is a lot of shell game. Um, every year around June, July, the legislatures would take money out of the general fund and give us a few more dollars to do a few more uh, projects. Uh, the, the 2015 package only gave us $600 million. The other 600 is uh, deferred to 2021. And that's if the money is there. So the, the, the legislature in 2021 could, could say, well, we're in red. We don't have the money. And besides, we didn't commit to this. And um, that, that, that's a possibility. But what the governor's proposing, it, they, they, nobody will t you can't touch that money because it's constitutionally dedicated to roads and everything is all, 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 all split out the way it should be. So with that, I, um, I just can't, th this last slide is just to show you that we have a lot of uh, other uh, stakeholders that are engaged in this campaign with us to try and help get the word out and how we uh, move on to fixing our roads. So with that, I'll open it up for any questions any of your commissioners may have. Director, first of all, thank you for what I think is an outstanding director's report. It's one of, certainly one of the best I've seen in eight and a half years here. Thank you, sir. Um, and before we open up to questions, would you mind sending us a PDF copy to our email addresses of this so that we can use this when um, members of the public and legislators ask us questions? I think this would be very helpful. Sure. Do you have any questions for the director? I do, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, on the back on the transparency slide, it, yes, sir. Uh, I, I think that's those are excellent, and I think you know having that out there for the taxpayers to be able to look at particular projects. But the the thing I've all, I've been uh, what uh, impressed with over the last six years sitting on the commission is the, the data that shows the high efficiency, the, the uh, very low error rate, uh, uh, data around warranties on, at, the, at the kind of 30,000 foot level. Yes, sir. So I would urge you, if you aren't already thinking about it, to have some, some good uh, information like that at the department-wide, uh, um, on a department-wide basis out there, that we can refer people to who have all those misconceptions that, oh, we could, we could fix the roads if uh, the state of Michigan wasn't wasting all their money on X, Y, or Z, or, or you know, that, that, that you know, they just don't build good roads yes. and all that kind of misinformation. I'm, I'm using a nice word. Nonsense. <laughs> Nonsense <laughs> that we all deal with out there, and it's so hard to deal with. But I'd urge you to think about kind of that if you haven't already, to yes, do that at the higher level. Yes, thank you. Because I think transparency is still the best way to deal with any government policy and, and government spending. Uh, Director, I know you and the governor have been out on the stump around the state uh, for the last uh, few weeks now yes, um, on, the, on the gas tax. Generally speaking, what's, what kind of response are you getting out there? Um, Honestly, I, what I'm even talking to legislatures, I think the, the initial shock is beginning to wear off. People are, you know, the general consensus out there to me is people are beginning to understand, yes, we do have a road problem. Uh, and to me, I always say the, the road to any recovery starts with admitting you got a problem, right? So the next question is how do we fix it? The governor's put her proposal out there. This is the way I think we can we can solve the problem, and she's challenged anybody else that has a better idea on how to raise that much money to fix the problem to, to come forward. Um, I, I, again, I, I, the, the town halls that we've done are very well received. Uh, we've had legislatures from both sides attend, and a lot of good questions have been coming out of that. I, 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 I generally believe, again, people want this problem fixed. Good. Thank you. <coughs> Director, do you um, anticipate uh, the spreading of the funds with uh, the counties and municipalities? Are you, would you think following Act 51 guidelines, or do you think there might be a different 
equation used uh, for these additional funds? Well, th this this additional fund is going to be using a different formula. And uh, what the governor uh, decided that we should do here is focus this on the most heavily traveled roadways with economic significance. And every county, every city has one of these roadways in their backyard. Uh, the, 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 other, the other piece that's missing in the conversation is that this is in addition to uh, what we're already getting, that we have uh, uh, existing funding formula that goes through Act 51 formula. What the governor is saying is let's not run this through Act 51, let's make this an addition to. And you will hear some in the, in the local level that say, well, that's not fair to them. But what's also missing in the conversation is that the governor is also proposing about a billion dollars of bridge bundling, meaning we've identified about 1,100 to 1,200 bridges, local bridges, not MDOT bridges, that are really in, in bad condition, needs repair. And these bridges, the locals, can, they don't have the money to fix them. Uh, some are actually being load rated, some are being closed because they don't have the money. So what part of the proposal is that let's identify these bridges, bundle them together, and that will, will work on uh, putting a contract out there to fix them over a period of time. And that's a billion dollars that's going to locals that's not doing anything to fix our system either. Thank you. Do you know when you'll have visibility to that formula? And I apologize if you guys covered that already. Uh, the, the, new, the formula that you'll be using for these additional funds? Oh, the, it, it's already out there. Again, it's not, a, it's not a formula. We identify a lot of this, as I mentioned, heavily traveled roadways. Uh, every elected official's got a map of their district on which roadways are going to be in that, that, that are included in that category. So the, the, the roadways are already out there. They've already been identified. Chris, read, read votes. <laughs> yeah. But I do recall that even though it's not following Act 51 formulas, there's still is it three percent that's going to be dedicated to uh, uh, to transit? Transit, that's correct, Thank and you. that's in addition to what they get now. Yeah. Yes. Um, nice presentation, Paul. Thank you, sir. Uh, the, when you were comparing Michigan and Florida, which I, I, I particularly like that uh, that comparison, but the the one thing. Uh, in addition to salt and, and the things that we have to do here in, in the north is the freeze-thaw cycles and how it degrades roadways way faster than it would in any of the southern states. But that might just be a little additional thing that we can throw into that. Yes, sir. And one of the things I didn't mention in that, that $6.1 billion didn't even include the uh, uh, tolling. That, uh, with tolling... It's about another three $3 billion, so total about $10 billion that they really spent. But outside of the tolling, they spent $6.1 billion a year. So you can share this with the commissioners if you want. That's the website. There is a website that you can go to, www. I don't even know why I said that, but I don't know that. <laughs> Michigan.gov backslash fixing MI roads. I am actually going to have my own website. It's called www.michigan.com slash kicking the can down the road. Yes. <laughs> Director, mm -hmm. anything else? No, thank you, sir. Thank you. And I know um, you may have to leave early to go meet with the governor. So if you do, again, thank you for uh, coming forward this body. Thank you. I now have the distinct pleasure of welcoming back um, region, Metro Region Engineer Kim Avery. Um, I've known Kim a long time now. I first broke bread with her, her here in Royal Oak at Chris Bally's uh, when she was uh, number two to Tony. Uh, she then got her own uh, region, which I call, you took Bobby's region, Kim? And then she was so highly thought of, they decided to punish her by giving her the hardest region, I think, in the whole kid and caboodle. And so, Kim, thank you for coming today. We're happy to be in your region. Uh, we chose it because of the I-75 project that's kicking off. Yeah, and I just um, I just wanted to um, you know say thank you for inviting me, and um, you know happy to be back in the uh, metro region. And if there's anything that we can do for you, um, don't hesitate to uh, reach out and uh, call me, 
and um, our staff is uh, there and willing to help and answer any questions. Any questions for Kim? We're going to be hearing from her, you know, quite a bit over the next few years with I-75, and she'll probably, along with Jeff Cranson and the rest and um, the, the uh, team, communications team, be bearing a lot of the brunt of the people who are complaining about the traffic but don't realize that what we're solving in four years of construction would have been 20. Yeah. Any questions? Thanks, Kim. Well, let's grab a let's grab a Chris Bailey's pizza again sometime. <laughs> All right. We're on to commission business. Uh, the minutes of January seventeenth. Does anybody have any changes or additions? Uh, I, we have, we have a Mr. Chair, just a uh, minor. Uh, if you'll see on the second page. Uh, the motion under director's report, it said I made a motion. Um, I wasn't there. <laughs> uh, I was, I think, on a plane coming back from Hawaii, and I don't think I could have made the connection. Uh, so anyway, somebody else must have made that motion. Maybe it was to make you do something. <laughs> if we assigned you a task, <laughs> yeah. well, we'll make that change. Okay. With that change made, uh, and we'll find out, um, Shikana, we'll find out uh, who made that motion on the tape. Can I have a motion to adopt it as amended? So moved. In support. A second. All in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed or abstaining? All right, Jack. Audit update. Good morning, everybody. Um, over the last few meetings, I've described some of the things that my on our external audit activities, but we also are one of the rare states that my office also serves as internal auditor for the N for for MDOT. And uh, bottom line is, is that we are here to advise and recommend. We're we're not at a an, uh, an approval entity. We're not here to approve or disapprove of MDOT's options. So we advise on uh, some of the cost proposals, whether or not uh, MDOT should accept the proposal or not. We advise on contracts, whether or not the, the contracts have uh, audit provisions to protect MDOT. And we advise on consultants, whether or not the consultants have the financial systems in place to ensure that we get billed the correct amount of money. <coughs> we also advise, most importantly, I think, on, uh, in, uh, on processes at MDOT, uh, procedures, internal controls, things like that. Um, so that is kind of like, uh, if you were at a movie theater, that was the, the teaser of what the discussions are going to be in the, in the months to come. But as an example, of, I'll be describing more about internal auditing, auditing at MDOT here in the future. Um, but one of the really big challenges MDOT is facing right now is uh, knowledge management. It's, you know, aging workforce, um, a lot of information in a lot of very smart people's brains. And, uh, and they're going to leave eventually. And I met yesterday with one of the uh, knowledge management gurus at MDOT to give them some thoughts and ideas. And I think he's a smart guy because he listened to me. Uh, anybody, that, uh, <laughs> anybody that actually follows my advice blindly goes down on the scale of smart. I think we all that, know that too. But uh, I do have a, a solution and he was extremely intrigued with with a solution that MDOT might want to roll out at some point. But he's going to experiment. He's going to, he's going to uh, work with the software himself. And I believe he's going to really very much like it. And I think it's very much going to be something that MDOT might want to adopt to help them document <coughs> processes, procedures, controls, how things are done um, so they're not having to reinvent the wheel. And that, uh, especially with people leaving, reinventing the wheel can be a very, very expensive proposition. That's the kind of stuff that my office does. And uh, we're here at all times to provide advice and thoughts and, uh, and things to, you know, um, brainstorming, brainstorming sessions to help them think, through, think things through perhaps a little bit differently than they might have done um, another without us. So um, with that being said, uh, if there's not any questions about any of this, that was my little teaser. I've said this before, I'll say it again. Our most important function here on this commission is our audit function. Not just auditing, but helping MDOT get better. <coughs> and everyone who sits on this board 
is here because they have experience outside of the MDOT world to bring to MDOT to help MDOT get better. So what Jack does is probably the most important thing for us at this commission. Anybody have questions? I, I just would say I, I highly value the um, what you and your folks bring, Jack, because uh, especially many years ago when I was first put on the uh, appointed to the commission, you know, we, we met much, much more frequently. Now we meet quarterly, which I think is great, uh, and our our meetings are efficient and, and all that. But I, I think there's a there's a need for in between meetings and kind of a, 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 a third party. Uh, validation of some things that we need and I think you provide that extremely well I know your notes to us and, and uh, uh, or your email to us and follow up to uh, various things that the chair signs off on it is very valuable to me as a, c a commissioner <coughs> to feel like I'm doing my job and doing it you know, conscientiously like I should do so I, I really appreciate the what you do for us Jack well thank you all for your kind kind comments Thanks, Jack. And for those of you who don't know, um, Jack and I communicate on a regular basis as, as well as the director and, and Troy. So while we meet quarterly, sometimes we talk weekly. Um, all right. We're going to move into our oversight. And <coughs> Carol, I see Carol's here. She's going to give the Myron report, otherwise known as Exhibits A, A1, and A3. The Myron report. report. So good morning, Chairman. Commissioners, Director, I'd like to present the 25 contracts in Exhibit A. These contracts are primarily for participation for local agency projects, and there's a few passenger transportation. Are there any questions in Exhibit A? Mr. Chairman, not a question, but a, but a comment, because I, I have a reputation for being a little grumpy sometimes about um, design standards for stormwater management, and I wanted to... Uh, um, I, I wanted to, what's it called, eat crow on that now because this because we have two projects here uh, on on today's schedule A that are um, bridge replacements over um, water bodies, uh, a, a creek and a river. And um, my concern in the past has been that our design design standards don't don't um, recognize. Uh, uh, a stormwater runoff directly into those water bodies. Uh, these two projects, if you took a look at them, um, uh, and, and, uh, and with the conversation that I uh, had with Troy on this, uh, we, we've done some extraordinary things to, uh, to divert stormwater runoff from, from the bridge directly into the, into the river. Um, in, in the design standards and the way that it's captured on the on the uh, on the on the uh, margins of the bridge uh, and allowed to soak into the soil, um, it's, it's 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 good work. And these are two very small bridges, but but I'm assured that when we get to the big bridges, we're going to be doing the same thing. We're no longer going to let stormwater with all the runoff from the from salt and uh, petroleum products and anything else that spills on the roadway. We're no longer going to let it. Uh, go into our our, our, our our precious rivers and lakes in, in Michigan. So I just want to say thank you to uh, uh, engineering and the design staff that's listened to this uh, grumbling on the part of this commissioner and has been very responsive. Uh, thank you. George, I think a large part of that is because of your grumbling, so thank you. <laughs> I move approval of Exhibit A. <coughs> Support. All in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed to abstaining? Motion carries. A1, please. To 28 construction projects in Exhibit A1. These are for your approval prior to the bid lettings at April 19th and May 3rd. Any questions on Exhibit A1? Move approval of Exhibit A1, Mr. Chair. Support. All in favor say aye. 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 Anybody abstaining or opposed? Motion carries. Let's go on to. Um, a3 while you're there. A3, two projects on Exhibit A3, which are for your information only. They're one bidder, less than $500,000. Any questions on Exhibit A3? <coughs> no motions required. Thank you. Brad, A2. <coughs> Morning, 
morning, Commissioners. I'm morning. back here once again to seek your approval <coughs> on two projects, one state project and one local job that uh, require your approval for the bid justification. And I would be happy to answer any questions that I can. Questions or motion? Move. Support. All in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed or abstaining? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Jason, Exhibit B. Morning, Commission. Uh, I will be reporting on Exhibit B uh, for MDOT projects for January, February, and March. We totaled or we finaled 110 projects, totaling approximately 468 million dollars. Seven of those projects were more than 10 percent over the original contract amount, and 78 came in under their respective contract amount. Final monthly costs for those three months, respectively, were minus 0.3, minus 0.8, and minus 2.1 when compared to their original contract amount. Our fiscal year to date is averaging about uh, negative 0.3% under the contract, original contract value, so we're pretty much running right on budget. Uh, local agency projects for those same months, 119 projects totaling approximately 104 million were finalized. 11 projects were more than 10%, which will be reported on uh, at a future commission meeting, and then 66 projects came in under the original contract amount. Uh, I just want to make a comment on the one, there's a project on there that you may have noticed is about 180% over. Uh, that's an innovative contracting method we're using. I don't know if the commission's been briefed on that. It's job order contracting is what we call it here in Michigan. About 10 other states are doing that as well. Some other states define it as indefinite delivery uh, of services. What we do on those projects just in, for in a, in a few seconds here is we put out a bid with work items and a quantity of one and the contractors bid an adjustment factor to those work items. And then the work is scheduled around the state or around the geographic area that the bid is. Uh, and we add the work to the projects. So when they're bidding it, they know the geographic area, but they don't know specifically. So they'll bid this adjustment factor, and then we'll do work over a period of one or two years, and we'll utilize that contract. So this is the first of four projects that we have active. We have three more. So you will be seeing three more projects on future commission agendas that are going to look a little <coughs> sideways with uh, original percentage values because it is bid at uh, you know, $100, and we will always be over that because we add work to that project. It helps us be a little more uh, nimble in responding to uh, traffic signal issues. Those, those four projects are all related to traffic signal work. So I just wanted to provide that comment because I, I figured that the, the number might cause a little heartburn among some folks and just wanted to explain that a little bit so maybe we can identify it in future uh, reports as such so that we see what that is sure okay and maybe get a uh, a one pager or something on that whole you can do concept. that yes we will do that any other questions no motion thank you thank you so we have an exhibit C I can't remember the last time we had a dart. <laughs> Chuck's been here for a dart. Mike's been here for a dart. George, you've been here for a dart. How long have you been on the commission, George? Three years. Three years. I was going to say it had to be at least three years since we had a dart. So, Jack, why don't you explain a dart, and then we'll go into it. Uh, DART stands for Disputed Audits Resolution Team. And uh, there are three members of MDOT, or, and myself, so two members of MDOT and one from the uh, commission audit. And it's usually, it's going to be, it was Myron, now it's Patrick. So Patrick and I are the stable, well, probably a different word. <laughs> we are the usual uh, attendees. And then there will be the applicable bureau head is the third person of darts. So what they do is, um, what, what happened is OCA did a review or an audit. And we never mind what we usually do to make sure we don't have a dart. But uh, if the person who was audited by us does not agree with our end result and believe me we tried everything to get to that point to avoid this but if it gets to that point that there is a dispute um, they have a right to file an appeal and what happens with there is that it's a certain number of days to before they file the appeal and after the appeal is filed MDOT has a certain number of days to get its ducks in a row as to whether it agrees with the auditor or if it agrees with the agency and no matter who MDOT agrees with or doesn't disagree with, it comes to before DART with, for kind of like arguments and, and facts. And DART decides what, uh, it decides what 
what the end decision is, and they make a recommendation to the director, and the director ultimately says yay or nay on, uh, on that. So that being said, um, we have something here in Exhibit C that followed exactly what I'm talking about here, but DART has not yet officially uh, provided its, uh, its final, its final <coughs> report on that. So um, I'm, I'm submitting it to you for your approval. There's one item on it. And it basically says that there's one unresolved service contract review that was more than 120 days have passed since we issued the report. But if you have any questions about what I just said or, or this, please uh, hit me up. Any questions about this $2,180 issue? No, but it's worth, it's worth, oh, it's worth stating it. that oh, yeah. uh, for any public that's here that it is $2,180, such a, a, a minute uh, portion of our of our overall budget, uh, important but uh, but but still minute. Oh, if we gave in, we'd be getting a lot more dispute resolutions. Uh, but I think in eight and a half years, Mike's been here almost as long. Maybe we've seen this three or four times yeah. at our level. I mean, it's just seeing Exhibit C is you know you have to remember what it was. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we are going to ask for a motion on that. I'll move approval. Support. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed or abstaining? Motion carries. <coughs> For information reports, Carol, I ask you to come back up and give the director's agenda and the stated uh, ad board agenda. To present the director's agenda, as I believe you all know, that's the agenda that um, we put items on that don't fall into the commission agenda or the state ad board agenda. Um, it's for transparency purposes. We do publish this agenda as well. Are there any questions on the director's agenda? Any? Do you have anything at all? There's no motion, so we'll go on to the next one. The state ad board agenda. I believe you know we do follow state ad board resolution for all contracts that are required to go on that agenda. Are there any questions on the state ad board agenda? Carol, thank you. Have a wonderful week. Thank you. There's no presentations. We will have a presentation July in the stand. Any public comments? Oh, wonderful. Please come on up. <laughs> if you could tell us who you are, that'd be wonderful. Of course. My name is Pat Perush, and I'm a Royal Oak City Commissioner. I would like to welcome you all to Royal Oak and to our, our meeting hall, which is where we sit two evenings a month and make decisions. Um, I'm glad you had an opportunity on a day that isn't rainy yet to see our improvements that are going on downtown. We're very excited about it. If you haven't um, seen the signs, this is going to be a Henry Ford outpatient facility. We're building a new city hall and a new police station on the other side of Troy Street, which is behind this building. This building is going to be demolished along with the police station, and this is all going to be a new public park right in the middle of downtown. So we're glad you're here to be able to see the initial phases of that construction project. Um, also, I wanted to point out to you that you've been talking a, a lot about fiscal issues and funding issues for the future as well as current budget years. Uh, we deal with the same types of issues here on the local level. Um, about 30 years ago, our voters approved a 10-year road millage to improve our local streets. We have 214 miles of local streets here in our community, which we have to maintain. Um, we get some funding through the county for those, but, but not nearly enough. Uh, and that road millage improved a number of local streets 30 years ago. And then in 2014, our voters again approved a 2.5 mil increase in taxes to, approve, to improve the roads again because the roads had further deteriorated and there were a number of other issues. Uh, some in the southern part of the city, which had not been touched in the early 80s, uh, were almost at the state of gravel as opposed to paving when the millage was, was approved in 2014. And um, those are the ones we tackled first. We have to coordinate those improvements with improvements to our sewer system and our, our water main system. So a lot of times when we've identified a, a certain section of roads as needing more improvement than others, we may not be able to, to piggyback those onto uh, sewer improvements and water main improvements at the same time, but we try to coordinate it to save money and to save aggravation so that the street isn't ripped up three times for the residents as opposed to just once. Um, but just so this is an example of local communities and how we have to deal with local 
funding issues because the state and county money does not trickle down to us. We have to raise it ourselves. And we have a lot of miles of roads in order to maintain. But we're doing okay. We're into uh, year number five of our 10-year program. <coughs> and we're just about to kick off our improvements for the community this, this season. It's not only concrete streets, but also asphalt streets. So there's two separate contracts for two different types of work. So again, I just want to welcome you to Royal Oak. I was graciously invited to um, join you for lunch, and you're going to Buki's, which is an excellent restaurant, and hopefully you'll get there and back without having to be poured on because the rain is coming. Um, but I, I got a text from a contractor working at our house. We have a 20-year-old, or not a 20, we have a house that was built in 1920. Um, he texted this morning that perhaps I should get back there quickly, uh, sooner rather than later, because they've developed, it, found an issue that nobody expected. Uh, so I'm going to have to unfortunately skip lunch. So enjoy your visit to the community. Uh, we're glad you came. Enjoy lunch. Uh, good, luck with, good luck with all your work. And uh, it's been a pleasure to be a part of your meeting. So thank you very much. Commissioner, thank, thank you for coming. And as a large taxpayer in Royal Oak, my headquarters two blocks away, I appreciate your service. Well, thank you very much. And, and I would say, from uh, coming down from Midland, uh, we, uh, I'm, I'm always impressed when I come to, to Royal Oak uh, on everything that you folks have done over this last probably 10 or 20 years. And we, we keep, Royal Oak's one of those communities, it's kind of Holland, Royal Oak, Ann Arbor, that we bring up up north as kind of the ideal of what we'd like to be. So uh, keep up the great work. It's, well, thanks. it's tremendous. We appreciate that. We appreciate that. When you talk about taxpayers grumbling about tax increases and in money, you know, you all know that we get the same thing. But, um, but so far, we've been able to make it work. So we keep our fingers crossed that we can continue with, with what we've got going. So thanks again for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Speaking of lunch, it's probably too, we're ending rather, eh, maybe on time early. Maybe we'll forego lunch unless people uh, really want to go at five minutes of 11. Uh, but we'll take that offline, but just uh, I think we'll maybe pass on that. And um, the next meeting will be July 18th in Lansing Aeronautics. Uh, I will not be there, so the vice chair will uh, lead in and be in charge of the agenda. Uh, he has some things to add, and I think it will be very good. We have a good presentation coming as well on asset management. And with that, we're adjourned.